What's going on YouTube? This is BX Mama 718 back at you with another video. And today I'm giving an overview of my experience with the Lenovo Legion Slim 7, the all AMD Advantage Edition. This is the 2022 version, all right? So I'm gonna go over um, some things I liked about it, some things I didn't like about it. Um, I'm gonna walk you around the device, etc. Um, give you my final thoughts on it and then uh, close out, okay? So first and foremost, um, looking at the device, uh, I think it looks extremely premium. Um, it is a thin aluminum chassis. It looks um, pretty much like a business product. It does not look like a gaming product at all. Um, it weighs 4.81 pounds, which is pretty light for a 16 inch. Um, it has a bright screen um, above 400 nits from what I measured which is great, a 16-inch QHD Plus resolution on the screen, 1080p webcam, which is right here on a notch. Um, excellent, excellent CPU performance. I mean, it's very snappy. Um, I didn't have any issues with it slowing down, getting held up, anything like that. So the processor did its thing, um, and the GPU performance is actually pretty decent. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously not top of the line. However, it can handle everything at native resolution. I'm talking about AAA games at native resolution, right? So I've done Battlefield 2042, um, God of War, um, Halo Infinite, etc. It was able to handle all those games at the QHD resolution, right? Now for God of War, um, it required a little bit more uh, CPU horsepower. So I had to change the setting from auto to turbo to get it to run smoothly. But nonetheless, it was able to run smoothly. Another thing I did like was uh, even with gaming, I gamed with both the uh, silent auto and the turbo. Uh, when you are gaming and the silent, it kind of neuters you to about 40 watts. Then when you do auto, it gets anywhere between 50 to 60. And then when you get to turbo, uh, it allows you to go up to 90 watts or allows the uh, GPU to get access to 90 watts. All right, now that's that's the wall from my testing that it seemed to hit. But either way, um, it was able to crank through some of those games, which I thought was awesome. Also, the USB Type C 135 watt charging capability works, and uh, that's a great addition. It's the first laptop I ever encountered that had that functionality, so I thought that was really cool. Um, the hinge feels very solid. There's little to no wobble. Again, we're going to go over some of this stuff as I start to interact with it. Um, what I like also it has a muted uh, look. There's no flashy RGB or some obnoxious logo or something like that. So I think it looks very clean. I love the aesthetics. Um, and again, that aluminum makes it feel very premium, right? Uh, the battery life from using this, um, if I put it in silent mode, cut the brightness to under 50%. Uh, take away the backlight for the keyboard, uh, make sure hybrid mode is on. I can get about six and a half hours with this thing, right? Almost seven hours, um, which is pretty good. And this is what just light use of so web browsing, some YouTube, um, some uh, office work from Excel, Word, PowerPoint, etc. Um, so usage will vary, but I got about six and a half hours, which was consistent, right? Um, and also the price was excellent. This is $1,949.99. So uh, what you get with it for the price, I think is great. If this was to go on sale, it would be a steal, right? But this is an excellent laptop. Now, let me go over some of the cons with you, and then we're going to open this thing up. One of the cons that kind of stuck out to me as I was interacting with it, but I shouldn't have been surprised, uh, was the depth of travel for the keys. So the keyboard... Uh, has a nice tactile feedback. However, you can tell it bottoms out really fast because it's not a lot of depth. And that is obviously because it's a slim notebook. It has a very slim and thin profile. So some sacrifice was made there. And you do notice it coming from like a last year's Lenovo Legion 5, like what I have. Or uh, if you have a uh, Lenovo Legion 7, you know, something along those lines, or a ThinkPad. Uh, you will notice it, right? You will tell that, oh, okay, these keys feel different. Even the keycaps feel different and the depth is short. However, it doesn't mean it's a bad keyboard. I was still able to type and I was still able to maintain my uh, typing speed on it. It just felt shallow, right? And just this, uh, this shallowness there. And that was uh, a little concerning. But after a while, I kind of muscle memory kind of got used to it. Um, but when I went back to another laptop, like the Nova Legion 5, and typed on it, I just 
just felt it again. I was like, okay, this feels really shallow, right? But you can live with it. Uh, also, the left palm rest is narrow and the trackpad is off center. So I'll show you that in a second. I mentioned an unboxing, but that kind of threw me off a little bit. It wasn't a huge deal to me, but if you do have big palms, you will constantly, constantly rub on the trackpad, right, with your left palm. I mean, it's just going to happen. You can't get around with it. Luckily, it does have pretty good palm rejection. Um, so, you know, you shouldn't have much to worry about, but you will feel it as your hand is moving across it, okay? Um, but then again, it depends on how you type. Some people type with their palms lifted up, so it depends on your typing style, right? Um, two other things that was extremely concerning. Um, and I'm going to let you hear it in a second. One of them is dealing with this left side of the hinge. When I open this laptop, you hear a creak. And no matter what I tried, it was consistent. Now, what I did notice was when I press on here, this part of the hinge is very solid. But when I go on this side and I press down, you hear that? Something is definitely off there. So even though the hinge feels solid, it makes that creaking sound, which concerns me about the lifespan of this laptop and over time, what can happen now. I could have gotten a lemon, right? It could have sustained some kind of injury and in transport or whatever the case may be. I won't know unless I was to swap this for another one. But at this time, I don't feel like doing that. And I just think for the average consumer, if they did encounter that, um, they would either return this outright, maybe swap it or send it in for a repair or something like that. But just to spend almost two, well, over 2000 with tax for something like this to get that type of. I mean, I was not expecting that. And it, and it really was a heartbreaker. Uh, also, uh, when I was going through. Uh, the laptop, um, I saw that McAfee was installed on it. That was like concerning because I don't recall the last time I seen McAfee installed on a gaming laptop that I had, but it was there. Um, no big deal. You know, I just download Revo, uninstall it, uninstall it, right? Got rid of it. Um, ran some updates. Um, and mind you, I, I ran some updates before I even did that, right? But this time after I installed McAfee, ran some updates and I rebooted the laptop. It came up to a window uh, that had some kind of bit locker was asking for a bit locker recovery key. Now I'm savvy enough to know what that is still kind of daunting. And again, this is something that's been reported in the past on Lenovo Legion laptops or just Lenovo ThinkPads, et cetera, in the past. So it's not, it's, it's not like it's a secret to those who are, who use Lenovo products, right? It's, it's, ha I've, I've had it happen before in the past. However, um, I did not know what kicked it off this time. And I thought that was very strange that after I got rid of McAfee, and rebooted uh, with a few updates that that happened. So I was savvy enough to know how to get the key, the recovery key, which I did. I plugged it in, and after that, it's been fine since. However, my main concern is a consumer, your average consumer. If they were to see that, right, they would be freaked out. They would think something's wrong with the laptop, it's broken, something happened, right? And then they would probably return it or try to swap it, but when they go to do updates again or remove McAfee, it'll happen again. They'll probably send in for repairs. I'm just saying, those two issues. Now, never mind McAfee being on there. You can always uninstall it. But if uninstalling it triggers, in conjunction with the updates, triggers that BitLocker recovery key error message, that's a big problem. So those are just some things that I wanted to just bring out in regards to pros and cons. Let's go ahead and open it up, look around. Um, and then I'm going to give you some of the uh, performance benchmarks that I ran, what some of those scores are, and then uh, we can round this out and I'll give you my final opinion. All right. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and lift it up. So I attempt a one hand lift, which you can do. One hand, one finger lift. All right. Let's remove this. All right. Now, another thing I will say is that this thing will show smudges not fingerprints but it will show smudges and get a bit oily so you will have to wipe it down pretty frequently so just keep that in mind uh one thing that i do like about this laptop is this biometric reader built into the power button i think that is really neat and convenient i like that better than windows face unlock always like Biometric reader is better. Uh, fingerprint reader is better. Um, also up here, there's a grill that does intake of air, which is cool. 
One thing I will say is that this laptop does a great job of dissipating heat. However, because it's made out of aluminum, uh, which is a metal, um, heat does spread, right? So while gaming or running benchmark tests when it would heat up, um, the keys would get kind of warm. Not hot, but they would get pretty warm. Uh, now, I don't have a thermometer or anything uh, to test that. However, I can tell through empirical experience that yes, it does get pretty warm, right? Not hot, not unbearable, but it does get warm, okay? And again, that's because of its thinness as well, right? Trackpad is great, very uh, responsive. I didn't feel the need to have to go and rush and get a mouse. The only time I used the mouse was just when I was gaming on it. But other than that, the trackpad is very uh, expansive, is wide, spacious, very responsive, didn't have any issues with that. Um, but what I was telling you guys is this narrow part of the um, wrist, palm rest here. I mean, um, you know, I was able to get by with it typing because I was able to lift this part and just type. But if you have big hands, you will run into this. And it's just this part right here that, um, you know, this indentured part right here that shows the separation between the chassis and the trackpad. Um, that you'll feel moving your hands a little bit, but I mean, teachers on what I do like is this numpad. Um, I'm a believer that if you're getting a laptop that's 15.6 inches or bigger, it must come with a trackpad. I mean, uh, well, if you're dealing with a laptop that's 15.6 inches or bigger, it must come with a numpad. That is just the standard for me. <laughs> You know, and that can even make or break a purchase for me because this actually increases productivity for those people who need that for productivity, right? All right. Um, also, um, I like the screen. It's awesome. Great screen. Here's your 1080p webcam. Webcam is pretty okay. It's, it's average. I would say it's above average. I'll say that. It's not good, but it is above average and better than the 720p, any 720p webcam that I put against it. Um, it far surpassed it. All right. I do like the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It makes the screen feel more uh, wider, taller and more immersive. So that is a great little touch on it right there. So I enjoyed that. Again, the keys. So you can hear the keys. Again, the keys are not bad. They're actually good. Um, they're not the best I've had, but they're pretty good. However, it is you, it does feel a bit hollow and shallow. I'll say that. It does feel a bit hollow and shallow. So uh, just take note of that. Um, also, let me see if you can hear this creak as I open and close the lid. All right. So just, just listen in. You hear that? Listen. That is extremely concerning. I've, I don't know the last time I've experienced anything like that on a laptop, but I know it's connected to this side. I don't know what's causing that, but this is cause for me to want to send it back at a replacement uh, or whatever the case would be. I, I would replace it just to see if I probably got a lemon but if it's consistent, to me, that is a fatal flaw, right? I just hope it's just this, um, this copy that I got here. All right, um, so let me show you uh, some more of it. Also, the top, what I do like, uh, which I've noticed in other Lenovo laptops, is that this um, plug icon lights up and gives you different colors from orange to white, indicating the charge status. Um, I do like the rectangular design of their pin connection uh, for charging, and I think that should be the standard. You do have a power shared port here, which works. Um, this is your uh, Type A, USB Type A, another USB Type A, and your HDMI 2.1 out. All right, confirm that this works. Um, no problem. This SD card reader on the side, this works as well, really good. The E shutter works great as well. Here's your uh, headphone microphone combo jack right here. Here's your vent. Okay, and again, look at the slimness of this. The 0 0.67 inches high. Very slim. And this is, and I do love the slim nature. I mean, it, it just makes it feel great. Also, you see this groove here in the back? Let me show you. You see this groove right here? It's excellent for grabbing and holding like this. 
I mean, if it feels just great, great to grab it, great to hold it. Um, on this side, uh, right here, we have an exhaust vent and two Type C's. Uh, you can definitely do your USB Type C charging in either port. It also has a uh, Display Port 1.4 and this one right here, um, which I thought was awesome. And again, I tested out HDMI, Display Port, and the regular screen and did a three screen setup just to confirm that it works and it does. Here's your ports on the back. Again, I like how this aluminum is machined. Um, also, because it's aluminum and the way it's machined, um, you know, it's rounded on the edges, which is awesome. However, um, you know, if you hold it at like, like this or something, you know, you will feel some of this. Like, you will feel some of it. Uh, the I'm not gonna say it's not an imperfection, but the way it's machined, you will feel it can cut into the skin if you hold it awkwardly. All right. Bottom, you have this long foot across that keeps it stable. You have one long foot across keeps it stable. You have one, two, three, four screws, five, six screws, seven, uh, eight screws. Uh, here's a speaker right here for sound, speaker right here for sound. The sound is above average. Um, some bass uh, treble is not too bad, but you know, it just it still leaves a lot to be desired. I didn't I wasn't expecting much for sound, but it for me it works, it's decent, right? Here's this grill, which I like really nice. The way it's machined in here is really nice touch. Okay, I think that that's pretty cool. All right, so. Let's go ahead and get into the performance. Let me get into that with you. And again, you'll see, even though the fingerprints will go away, it does leave like that oily residuals behind. Um, here you have the Legion machined in here, which I like is really good. But again, this also is a fingerprint magnet. Take a look at that. Also a fingerprint magnet. Um, but I do like how uh, it reflects. And then you have your Lenovo badge over here, logo badge over here. So let me open it up so you can take a look at the screens, go into the performance benchmarks, and I'll give you my final thoughts, okay? All right, so let's go through the benchmarks. Uh, first and foremost, we have 3D Mark. So in the 3D Mark score, I got 8,894. So the 3D Mark. Uh, Time Spy demo. This is the demo uh, score. I got 8,894, which I think is really good. Um, I got 8,678 on the graphics score and 10,357 on the CPU score. Okay. Cinebench R23. It got 13,161 points on the CPU multi core. And 1,362 points on the CPU single core, which is outstanding. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And again, uh, this is with the settings on auto. CPU Z score, the single thread CPU score is 650.5. And the CPU multi thread score is 6,116.9. All right, the Fermat score is 7,378 points. Again, this is on auto. Uh, the score that I got for 3D Mark is with the MUX switch on. All right, this one um, was on hybrid mode, so uh, it, the MUX switch wasn't on. If I rerun it, I'm sure I can get maybe another 100 points more, uh, but I just wanted to point that out for you, okay? Also, I got a pass mark score of 6,201.3 with a CPU mark score of 25,674.4. A 2D graphics mark of 697.1 and a 3D graphics mark of 12,978.5 and a memory mark of 2,711.7 and a disk mark of 36,548. All right. So this laptop, as far as performance, scored very well, exceptional. Um, I mean, I knew the weakest link will probably be the CPU. Um, it only comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Um, so if you want something more, you can open it up and you can add to it, which is a positive thing. Um, uh, well, 
when I say add to it, you can only add one stick to it. So uh, eight gigabytes is soldered on and the other stick is a sodium slot that you can add additional storage to. So you can't swap out both, but you can, you can, you do have some upgrade ability, right? Um, and then the SSD is one terabyte. You definitely can swap that out for a higher capacity drive. All right. Um, but I knew the GPU going in, doing my studies on it is a cut down version of the 6800M. And um, I knew that, you know, that it would uh, not be super performing. Uh, however, I'm going to say this, like I said before, I played four or five AAA games, uh, Ultra QHD um, on auto. And when I seen limitation of auto, I went to turbo. And again, I think the hottest temp that I saw while gaming at when we got of war, um, it got to about 79 to 80 degrees. Uh, which is not bad with everything on Ultra at QHD plus, and I was getting uh, about what fifty frames per second, um, so that was not bad. It was it was actually pretty good. When I had it on auto and we had some of that wattage cut down, I was getting maybe thirty something frames per second. It wasn't smooth until I hit turbo. So for some games you might have to hit turbo and get the full wattage. Other games, if you want to play it at ten eighty p with ultra settings it should run fine or if you want to do the qhd plus and cut down the settings from ultra to maybe medium high settings uh you could do good with just getting the 50 watts that gets pumped through it on the auto setting okay now let's talk about this power brick so this power brick is a 230 watt it's a slim brick they call it a slim brick um it feels a bit hefty um but it's lighter than a 300 watt power brick that comes with the Lenovo legion 5 that i have um, but it is 230 watts. Um, it's something that does not add a lot of substantial weight uh, to the bill. Actually, uh, this is lighter, both with the power brick and the laptop, than my Legion uh, 5 with it at 5.51 pounds uh, for the laptop and then maybe three pounds, I think, for the power brick. This one, the power brick is two something pounds. Um, and this right here is 4.81. So, both of these together is actually lighter than my Lenovo Legion 5 laptop bundle, okay? Um, so I would say the cord is not too bad. Again, I like this rectangular connection, and I think this should be industry standard going forward, all right? Uh, with the exception of the Type-C, hopefully Type-C can get up to 300 watts, right? Or at least 230 watts. That would be awesome. However, this can do 135 watts over Type-C if you have a GAN charger, right? A GAN charger, all right? All right, want to do a side-by-side -side comparison for you before I close out. Uh, on the left is the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 2022 edition, the all AMD Advantage model. Over to the right is the Lenovo Legion 5 2021 edition in Stingray White. And this is an all AMD Advantage laptop as well. This has the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H and it has the AMD Radeon 6600M, all right? Whereas on this side, this has the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, and then it also has a AMD Radeon 6800S. Now, in regards to uh, comparison as far as graphics, this one is superior, but not by much. The 6600 gets about 100 watts, so it comes within spitting distance of this at times in the gaming performance that I did, but this still comes out on top, okay? Uh, also, the CPU performance on here is unbridled, and it is phenomenal, and it smokes this, like, as far as CPU performance. Like, this this definitely cannot keep up with this. Not saying that this is sluggish or slow or anything like that, but only really through synthetic benchmarks, you can tell this is more fluid. But even outside of that, it just feels a little bit more snappier than this one, right? Um, but nonetheless... Uh, this right here was $1,244 with tax. This was $2,066 and change for tax. So there is a remarkable difference, about $800 difference between the two uh, products. Uh, this one is all plastic. This is aluminum. However, um, if I had to choose, uh, currently I will keep my Lowo Legion 5 because that creaking sound, I'm telling you, man, that is that bothers me, and I cannot keep a laptop hearing that and knowing that. I mean, it's extremely bothersome. To get the McAfee, I took that off, and the BitLock recovery key, whatever, that was resolved. 
those things are not really a big deal to me. I don't care. As long as I can fix it and it doesn't come in, come back again, it's no problem. But that creaking sound. Um, and then the keyboard on here is awesome, man. It's just phenomenal keyboard. Great travel, thick keycaps. This one, thinner keycaps. Uh, the travel is much uh, shallow, shallower. So the typing experience for me is better than Nova Legion 5. Um, but I will say this, um, I can get past that typing experience and just get used to it, even with the narrow palm rest. As you can see here, the palm rest is a little bit wider here and it's a little bit narrower here. Um, but nonetheless, um, if I had to make a decision, uh, I'm personally keeping this. Um, I may try to swap that to see if that creaking sound goes away. But if I get another uh, model and... The creaking sound is not there. I know that this is a lemon and I would choose this one over this because this is just, just screams premium. It does. This is my OG Nova Legion 5, but this screams premium. All right. But you can't get go wrong with either one of them. I just, as far as Lenovo is concerned, I think they're doing, they're doing excellent with their Legion line of products. And, um, you know, I'm definitely a Lenovo Legion fan. It's like I'm an Asus ROG fan, right? Um, so I just love both companies' products. Again, this is a well-made product. If you do get it, just be mindful of the things that I told you, which is the hollow and shallow keys, um, the narrow palm rest on the left, and that creaking hinge sound. Um, if you can get past the keys, this narrow palm rest, and yours does not have that creaking sound, I would say this is a, this is a phenomenal laptop. For the price as well, you cannot go wrong. QHD Plus Gaming, uh, 3D CAD modeling, whatever you're trying to do on it. Uh, productivity, web browsing. I mean, it, it did not skip a beat. It did not let me down. It's just that creaking sound, right? So hopefully if you guys are looking for this and you get it, keep that in mind. And if yours does not have it, great. So with that being said, that is my overview. Again, this is a phenomenal product. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoyed my time with it, but that time is up now. The OG Lenovo Legion 5 Stingray White survives yet again, um, <laughs> you know, and it's going against all of these top-notch premium laptops, but all of them seem to have some kind of Achilles heel that makes me say, eh, it's not worth it, and I'm just going to stick with the Lenovo Legion 5, all right? Hopefully you guys enjoy that. If so, hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you're brand new to this channel and share this video everywhere so more people can get some insight on this Nova Legion S7, which I think is a phenomenal product. All right, thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.